It is hard to believe that Brentley and I have been married for three years. And in all that time, we haven't been apart for even one night. What we like to do best is travel all around the world. We have been so many places. We have seen so many things. We saw... We saw the Sphinx. We saw the Great Wall of China and the Taj Mahal. We saw great works of art. We saw a lady walking on a tightrope across Niagara Falls. She almost slipped twice. And elephants. We saw the royal elephant hunt in Siam. In Ireland, we petted Dennis O'Shaughnessy's pig. And we floated across the Nile on hippopotamus skins. But Paris, Paris is always my favorite. We have been to Paris 75, oh, a hundred times. Especially the Meraville Gardens. The Meraville Gardens are our world. Together, Brentley and I see all the world, all in the stereoscope. You see, I've never even left the French Quarter. I was born in this house, and I rarely leave it. It is all because of you. You know, you tell me that because of my heart condition, I have to be good. You tell me that a sudden shock could kill me. <laughs> so I rarely even leave the house. But Brentley has been so many places. He has done so many things. He has been to all the places in the stereoscope. And when he tells me about them, I can almost believe that I have been there too. Still, just a moment longer, Louise. I want to listen to this one spot again. Any arrhythmias or palpitations? No. I have some good news for you, Louise. That makes seven months now your heart's been stabilized. You are stronger now than you've been in years. <laughs> Brentley will be very pleased. Oh, <laughs> Thank you. Maggie, can you believe it? <laughs> Does this mean I can leave the house? I don't see why not. <laughs> Am I well enough for a trip? Where would you like to go? To Paris. Paris? <laughs> if I could just go to Paris once with Brentley. He's told me so much about it. I'd take his arm, and we'd stroll in the gardens. He says the light there falls to the trees in a certain way. A charming picture. <laughs> Dear, let me get a good look at you before I go. Dr. Mr. Brentley says she doesn't sleep well and she has nightmares. It's the same dream over and over. Oh? We are having a party. You and Eugenie are there, and Aunt Josephine and Maggie, and, of course, Brentley. 
I have made an arrangement for the center of the table. Roses. But they don't smell. And as I watch them, they turn into my limbs. My legs. My arms. My eyes. Even my heart. Each of you takes a piece of me and puts it on his plate. I remember quite distinctly, Dr. Lebrun, you take my heart. Oh, really? Yes. But when you cut it with your knife, instead of turning to blood, it turns to dust. And then the shutters blow open and all the dust swirls away. There's nothing left. Well, I hope you don't really think of me as such an ogre. A little warm milk before bed should give you a more peaceful night. Warm milk. What time is the party tonight? Eight o'clock. How long has it been, this miracle of a marriage? Three years. Congratulations. Eugenie and I will join you at eight. The doctor's news has gone to your head. The wisteria is off. Please help me get it right, Maggie. be so happy. Dr. Lebrun has given me such hope. Even when you were a little girl and had a fever, I used to tell you never to lose hope. I told you that one day a man would come who'd been across the ocean and would tell you about the world. And it would be like you traveled to all those places yourself. Didn't he go? Same? Utterly the same. <laughs> is that what I think it is? Where did you find it? I'll give it to you at the beginning of our hour. Just today, let's have it earlier. Let's have it now. It's not yet six. Hello, Aunt Joe. 
your stitches were prayers, we'd all be saved by now. And how was your day, my dear? Well, I got wind today that building on Chapatulas will be coming on the market any day now. I'm just waiting for a telegram from the owners in Mandeville. I've been waiting how long, Aunt Jo? Two years? Almost two years. Walking home, I thought, everything dearest to me is here, waiting. And then I thought of you, Aunt Jo. Praise for my soul daily. And I thought, today is my anniversary. And I am married to the most exquisite lady in all of Frenchtown. Did Louise tell you the good news? Aunt Jo! She wants you all to herself today. You go along. I had to go to the exchange, but I zigzag. Ursuline and Decatur. Decatur? Mm -hmm. oh, funny, I had you on Royal all the way. Not this morning. What's your news? Uh, did you go by way of the French market for Café au lait? One for you and one for me. With two teaspoons of sugar. <laughs> I'll never fit into the dress. Did you go up on the levee? Yes, she's in. From St. Louis. I know that she has a whistle all her own. Mm -hmm. So you got to the office at 9. Oh. No, you were late. 9.30. Quarter of 10. <laughs> After lunch, I went to look at that billy on Chapatulis. If I can get it, the whole block will be mine. Like a string of stones and a necklace. When will you hear from the owners in Mandeville? I have no idea. But the building will be mine, all right. You know what I like about real estate? <laughs> it's there. When you walked home along Charter Street, did you stop and smell Mrs. Bright's wisteria? Did I? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I can see from the kitchen. <laughs> Dr. Lebrun had good news this afternoon. My heart is better than ever. He says it's strong enough for me to leave the house. Did he? Hello, Maggie. Good afternoon. Oh, another of your miracles, huh? Yes. Mm -hmm. oh. Here. oh, thank you. Antoine, choose one. Must be time now. I'll go get your absent. What did Dr. LeBron say? He said he never heard a heart beat better. Oh. How much better? He said she could increase her activity, but if she had a sudden shock, we still might lose her. Maggie, inside the walls of this building, we can protect her. We can't control what happens if she goes out the front door. A carriage could come by too quickly. My God, a steamboat whistle could kill her. The next thing you know, she's going to start asking to go to Venice or Paris. It's too great a danger. Doesn't Dr. Lebrun see that he is just giving her false hope? I'm really very angry at him.
I think I'll go upstairs and change for the party. <laughs> what you two do with that contrivance every evening is beyond me. It's just the same, but new. It's so beautifully new. But maybe it won't work as well as the old one. Quick, let's try it. No? Oh, Brentley, we're back in Paris. We're back in our gardens. Are you sure you don't want to go somewhere else? No, never any place else. Well, do you want to hear about the ice cream cart? Or, let me see, the flower vendor? Or the light? The light. The light. All right. The light. You are wearing a yellow dress. You are carrying a yellow parasol. Yesterday it was white with a yellow ribbon, the parasol. Today it is completely yellow. Oh, yellow. Mm -hmm. Well, it hasn't come into color and it isn't moving. You are carrying a yellow parasol. I am wearing a red tie. And I have a red hat band. Oh, yes, it's coming. It's coming into color. Tell me when it starts to move. Hurry and get to the light. It never moves until you get to the light. The light has to do with the trees. Name the trees, name them. Turkish oaks. Turkish oaks. It's almost started to move. Well, the light falls through the leaves. Oh, Brentley, the parasol is going round and round. Don't stop. And if there's a breeze, the dark and the light move so that the ground in the grove is shimmering, dark and light, like the surface of a pond. It's almost as if we are standing on the surface of a pond. Oh, Brentley, it's going further than it's ever gone before. We are moving. We are almost dancing on the dark and the light. We are moving. Oh, my God, no. Make it stop. Now. Make it stop. Why? Oh, why? It's what I want. Oh, please, Brentley. This summer, you must take me to the Merrillville Gardens, to the real gardens. This summer, I want you to take me on a boat all the way to Paris. This summer, I was thinking of buying an icebox so that Maggie could keep the milk cold and we could have chips of ice on our drinks. Wouldn't it be nice to have frost on the outside of your glass when you reach for it? It's so hatefully hot here in the summer. Everything slithers around. I want to go to the gardens, to the real ones. But we have the cards. I want to go to all the places in the cards. I have been to all of those places, and I tell you about them, don't I? You seem to like it when I tell you about them. Oh, I do. It's my favorite thing. It's almost my only thing. But don't you understand? I want to go with you. I want to take your arm and stroll with you through the grove of Turkish oaks and walk on the shimmering pond. Really? For me, it is better in the cart. Really? No. Paris is too far.
A telegram from Mr. Mallard. Thank you. Who was that? Telegram for you, sir. George, get out an extra bottle of champagne tonight. I have some good news. Well, what do you think? Well, for one thing, the lady in the picture has a parasol in the way. Except for that. Well, her dress isn't yellow because it's not even in color. I know, Maggie. That, that happens later. Except for that. How long did it take you to sew this secret dress in? Two months. Well, then I guess it looks like the lady in the picture. Oh, dear. It's my present from Brindley. He's not going to recognize it any better than you. Where is this place? The Merrillville Gardens in Paris. Paris. You in Paris. <laughs> you know, you have a way of turning your head just like your mama used to do. Even when you were a little girl, you used to do that. Come down. Do you like me in yellow? Is that a new dress? No. Have you worn it before? No. Which is it then? It's both. Think of the color. Yellow. The dress. Yes. From the gardens. But what about the guests? They won't know. How could they? The yellow will give it away. We're the only ones who see the yellow. That's true. My present for you. I adore you. I thought if you saw me in the yellow dress, you'd want to see me in the gardens, the real ones. Yes. Well. Oh, a telegram arrived while you were upstairs. A telegram? The widow who owned the house on Chapatulis has died. I'm going to Mandeville tomorrow. You're going tomorrow? on the early train. I already sent them to him to book me a ticket. Oh. How long will you be gone? Three or four days. Brentley, could I come with you? The train ride is only a few hours. Dr. Lebrun says I'm almost well. I know my heart is strong enough. Louise. I'll tell you about Mandeville when I come back. I won't get in your way. I'll stay in the hotel room when you are doing business. But at twilight, when you're finished, we can take a walk by the lake. Open up. Open up. The party is started. <laughs> it's impossible. You can't go. 
That's final. Are you finished, Miss Louise? Oh, yes. No one could live that way. Yes, it's interesting to consider the effects of repression on the human spirit. Interesting to consider the effects of northern soldiers in our streets. Oh, but the troops have been gone for a week and life is gloriously free. Southern men and women are free now. Body and soul free. Here's to home rule and a free South. A free South. To a free South. A free South. To a free South. Louise, it's awfully quiet tonight. I have to go out of town on business for a few days. I'm sorry that I have to leave Louise behind. It's the first time Brantley's been away since they've been married. That's why she insisted on sitting next to him tonight. Oh, my word. <laughs> now, any nation that can make a cake like that can rise again, eh? <laughs> oh, it is beautiful. Will you teach me how to make the cards come into color? Here's to Louise in yellow. Here's to marriage. Why would you want to do it without me? Here's to that institution which continues to remove Because me. you are going away. I think you're just afraid of being fatally trapped by matrimony. I was treating a man who had few days left to live. One morning... His wife came and asked me to give her a potion so that when her husband died, she could end her life as well. My dear lady, I said, the Hippocratic Oath forbids me to do anything but promote life. I saw her just the other day on Royal Street, walking her Pomeranian. She had a bunch of violets in her belt. What a strange woman. Mm. Sometimes one's reaction to calamity is quite the opposite of what one expects. Here's to Brentley's trip tomorrow to Mandeville. To Brentley's trip? To Brentley's trip? To Brentley's trip. To Brentley's trip. Brentley said it was built by Shah Jahan as a tomb for his wife. She died young. What Brentley and I like to do best is travel all around the world. We've been so many places. Uh. <laughs> of course, you know I've never even left the French Quarter. You tell me that I have to be good. But a sudden shock. <laughs> Paris is always my favorite. Brentley and I have been to Paris 75, oh, 100 times. <laughs> Especially to the Merrivale Gardens. Good doctor. Will you and Louise join us? Oh, yeah, it's time for a song, eh? Oh, good. What shall it be? Uh, will thou be gone, my love, or uh, Froggy Mercorn? <laughs> oh, Froggy. Froggy's my favorite. Eugenie? Will thou be gone, or Froggy? Richards is in charge. Froggy, then. We all know Froggy, eh? Yes. 
Uh, Doctor. Eugenia. And Joe. Uh, Louise. Right here, next to Brantley. <laughs> Frog went courting and he did ride a horse. Oh, ho, ho. A frog went courting and he did ride a, a sword, sword and pistol by his side. Uh huh. Oh, ho. Uh huh. Down he went to his mousey store. Uh huh. Ribbit, ribbit. Oh, oh. Ribbit, ribbit. Took Miss Mousy upon his knee, said, Miss Mousy, will you marry me? Oh, yes, I will. What shall the wedding breakfast be? Two creamed eggs and a black-eyed pea. They all went sailing across the lake. Got swallowed up by a big black snake. Uh -huh. Oh ho! Uh -huh. You are angry. You thought I was traveling with Dr. LeBron. I was only naming some of the places we go. I showed him the gardens, but I didn't speak of the color or the moving. I would never have told him about the light. Don't you see, I was only practicing. You are always the one who does the talking. I was trying to see if I could do for myself. Brentley. I must have some sort of life while you were in Mandeville. I would never have told Dr. Lebrun about our world. It's not our world. Not if you told someone. <laughs> our world is over. Your mind at every thought. Eyes. Mary. Eyes. Heart. Mary. I have. Tighter. Tighter. Dream again. Light the candle, please. All
I'll miss my train. Maggie, take Miss Louise back inside. I'll be late. No, boo. No, babe, you can't go in there. No. Boo, stay. Subsequent trains traveling northward will be detained. Passengers will be returned to New Orleans as soon as possible. Signed, Management of the Poncha Train Railroad. Brindley's name was first on the passenger reservation list. When I left the office, the telegrams were pouring in over our own wires, too. There'd be no doubt about the news. Aunt Cho? Maggie? Something is wrong. Where's Brentley? Sit down, my child. Sometimes God does things that we cannot understand. It's Brentley. His train was in an accident this morning. He's been killed.
I'm going upstairs. Boo. You're trembling. Shh. I'm going up. Let me go with you. Please. No. My Maggie. Brindley, I am letting you go. The gardens are over. I am alone. I am nothing. But I am free. Terribly free.
Louise, Dr. LeBron's come to see you. I heard the news about Brantley. I'm so sorry. Yes. You've had such a shock. Yes. Child, shouldn't you lie down? No, I'm not. You broke this. Oh. Well, I'm sure we'll get another in the morning. You don't need to. I'm going to go to all the places in the cards for myself. Louise, Brentley would not want you to do that. He wouldn't want you to go away. He'd want you to stay home and be safe. Brentley is dead. I'm going to go to the Taj Mahal, the Sphinx, Niagara Falls, the Nile, and Paris. Always Paris and the gardens. This is the first moment of my life, and I want to live it forever. No, thank you. Maggie, are, are there peaches in the kitchen? Yes, there are peaches. Come, let's go down to the garden. The light comes through the door. No! Friendly! Oh. Oh. Friendly!